We're all here to do what we're all here to do. I'm interested in one thing, the future. And believe me, I know, the only way to get there is to get there. See those birds? At some point, a program was written to govern them. A program was written to watch over the trees and the wind, sunrise and sunset. Their program's running all over the place. The ones doing their job, doing what they were meant to do, are invisible. You'd never even know they were here. But the other ones, well, you hear about them all the time. so sad. When you get up from your bed, using your left foot not knowing what to do with your life. So you turn on the radio looking for music. But you can only hear waste, waste, only waste. Then you return to bed and decide to pay a visit for the places you've never seen before. And so you walk, you walk. So you walk and walk and walk. When you look around you in a place you've never seen before, 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 before Hearing a sound, sound, sound Who makes you think you are in heaven, in heaven? And so you ask, ask Ask the yes and brothers And so you ask, ask Ask the yes and brothers And so you ask, ask me What is this? How ya Hanoi? Let's have some fun with that groovy third rock from the sun. It's the fourth episode of Earth Jam, here on Hanoi Community Radio. I'm your guide, Fluid Druid, and oh, am I thrilled to jam with you once again. On the show tonight, we are doing a special deep dive on a theory I've been cooking up. 
that disco music was once saved from certain doom by the Italians. I'm excited to tell you how. We've also got boogies, grooves and chants from Libya, Nigeria, Ukraine and Canada. Not to mention traditional Thai folk music that's taken straight out of Compton. Hmm. And there's proper cello tunes courtesy of Yo-Yo Ma, who has just released an earth jam of his own. And this opening song was a Brazilian named Sergio Mendes. He gave us some very percussive food for thought, preceded by some wise words of the oracle. And we were asked a question. What is this? What is this? We are in heaven. Ah. Now, love it or hate it, it cannot be denied that K-pop has taken the world by storm in recent years. But did you know that HK-pop did it first? That's right, we're moving on to Hong Kong, a city that was filling dance floors in a time before BTS were just a twinkle in their producer's eye. The man of the moment was Roman Tam. He was born in China in 1950, and then at the age of 12 immigrated to Hong Kong, where he enjoyed a successful career spanning three decades. Coming to be regarded as the grand godfather of canto pop, a genre also known as HK pop. Beaming to you now from 1983 is Ji Guangzong, which is the Chinese word for laser.
listening to Earth Jam with Fluid Druid on Hanoi Community Radio. I'm gonna go ahead and call that a Benghazi bop Right out of Libya That's a song called Soleil Soleil by Ahmed Fakrum A man considered to be one of the foremost pioneers of modern Arabic music Have you been enjoying Earth Jam so far? Well, if so, go to Hanoi Community Radio's Mixcloud page and you can listen back to all past and future episodes of the show, depending on when you look. In the coming days and weeks, the station is also running fundraisers to help our brothers and sisters in Saigon. So, be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for up-to-date information on that. Okay, okay. It's time for a Fluid Druid Deep Dive. It's July 12th, 1979. For years, disco has been dominating. In the charts, in movies, on ads on TV, all over radio. For disco lovers, these were what you'd call good times. For others, it was perhaps a bit unescapable. You see, some people don't like disco. And that's okay. Not everyone is supposed to. But if you're not a fan of something, just don't listen to it. Because when you instead choose to feed a negative energy, 
any negative energy, you run the risk of letting it consume you. And that's what happened at Kaminsky Park in Chicago, Illinois. Without a doubt, the darkest day in disco's history, an event known as Disco Demolition Night. It involved an angry contingent of closeted and sexually repressed pale stale males who were more than a little upset that rock music was no longer king of the airwaves. With their fragile masculinities also threatened by the fact that African American, Latino and LGBT communities were finally finding their place on the dance floor too. Everybody dance. And in the US, this disco backlash formed into a movement called Disco Sucks which was led by a radio presenter named Steve Dahl. He ran a major league baseball promotion whereby fans could get into a game cheap if they brought an unwanted disco record with them. And attendees did this in their droves. Bringing not just disco, but also a lot of funk and soul vinyls too. It proved an easy bandwagon for racists to jump on. Regardless, Dal gathered them all and put all of the vinyl in a huge crate in the field in the middle of the stadium. I'll let this news report from the time tell you what happened next. 50,000 people, the largest crowd of the season, showed up at Chicago's Comiskey Park for the twinite doubleheader between the White Sox and the Detroit Tigers. 15,000 others had to be turned away. Many had come for Disco Demolition Night, a promotional gimmick. Between games, as planned, a huge box containing thousands of disco records was blown up. The rest was unplanned stormed out onto the field in the thousands. Disco records were hurled like frisbees. Bonfires were set, bottles were thrown. The batting cage was torn down and destroyed. Fist fights broke out. White Sox players had to be locked in their clubhouse for their own protection. The melee lasted an hour and a half and resulted in 39 arrests and a few minor injuries. But baseball fans missed the second game. It was canceled. The White Sox lost it. It was forfeited to Detroit. Forfeited to Detroit would be a great name for a techno song. Anyways, as you heard, things got ugly at Disco Demolition Night, and it descended into a full-blown riot. But rather than just being a homophobic and racist rally, this actually proved to be the catalyst of Disco's demise. Even Cheek, one of the biggest bands of the era, were effectively ended by this. That's them, playing in the background by the way. And here's what their main man, Niall Rogers, had to say about the Disco backlash. The whole Disco Sucks movement really broke my heart. Even though Chic, we didn't think of ourselves as a disco band. We didn't think that they were talking about us. We didn't think that they were talking about us until there was a big music industry function in New York at a club. And the same people that loved us only six months before um, <laughs> were like on the other side of the room. They threw this place in a, in a big restaurant that had a disco inside the restaurant. And so the room where the dance floor was had a sign over it that said disco. I swear to God, not one person from the big music industry would walk over that threshold into that room that said disco. They were all huddled in this bar because they didn't want to walk into the room that said disco because disco sucks and the trend was changing. And God forbid that they'd be a part of that. So Bernard and myself 
we did what I thought was the single most revolutionary event of my entire Black Panther life, was walk into that room and sit on that stage and be proud to representing disco, because up until that day, we never thought of ourselves as a disco act. And I just said, look at these guys, Bernard. These are the heroes of our industry. These are the brave people that say, no, Alice Cooper, nah, nah, nah. Rolling Stones, man, rock and roll, blah, blah, blah. They're afraid because they're, they're going to appear to not be cool now. And we proudly went into that disco and it was just he and I by ourselves in that room for about an hour and a half. No one would come in there except for the surfing people. Well, good man, Niall. And good to know you can always count on surfers too. So... Things were clearly in dire straits. Actually, I'd imagine a lot of radio stations probably switched over to playing dire straits after this. Because a horrible notion rippled out across the world. Disco wasn't cool anymore. Disco was dead. Or rather, it had to evolve into spin-off genres like High Energy in San Francisco, while in Chicago, where that shit show at the stadium took place, it actually went underground entirely, and thus house music was born. So this was all very necessary in the grand scheme of things. But that fun, exuberant, carefree and distinctive sound that we love disco for was over, everywhere, forever. Or was it? See, here's the thing. At the same time that this was happening, well, disco was only beginning to hit its stride in everyone's favourite boot-shaped southern European country. And fortunately, Italy did not give one continental fuck what the rest of the world thought about disco being over. In fact, they unashamedly carried on like it was the coolest thing since spaghetti bolognese. But, because American interest in disco had sharply declined, This did have a huge knock-on effect after 1979, and fewer and fewer English-speaking artists were recording disco records. So, in direct response to this challenge, Italian producers and DJs who kept wanting to hear more of it, well, did they give up? Hell no! They just decided to make their own disco instead. Never a bad idea. They took one look at Steve Dahl and the Disco Sucks movement and they said, Vaffanculo! And they just started making their own original productions to bridge the gap. Birthing a whole new genre in the process. Italo Disco. Isn't it beautifully ironic that the campaign to kill Disco only helped create more types of it? You see, Disco Demolition Night, directly or indirectly, created Itala Disco. And as a result of that, Itala Disco kept the true spirit of disco alive, preserving its unapologetic campness and space lasers in the process. There ain't no stop on us now. And it went further than that too also incorporating elements from underground dance, pop, and electronic music like High Energy, French Euro Disco, and even rap. And over the course of the 1980s Itala Disco, it developed into a super diverse genre of its own, which then in turn later served to influence the UK's underground music scene, and you can, you really can hear that impact clearly 
in the music of British electronic acts like the Pet Shop Boys, Erasure and New Order. I would also argue that The Bad Touch, which was an outrageous hit by an American band called The Bloodhound Gang in 1999, you and me baby, we ain't nothing but mammals, well that has very distinct Italo disco features. Just compare it to the next track I'm about to play. And what became of Italo disco? Because you really don't hear much about it these days. Which is a shame. Well, having succeeded in its mission, I guess, it gracefully faded out in the early 90s when it split into Eurobeat, Italo House, and Italo Dance. And that's what I love about music. When you take a step back, it's so easy to see that it's a living, breathing, constantly evolving thing. A never-ending positive feedback loop. With so many facets of it inspiring and being inspired by its own spin-offs around the globe. So, let's hear it in action then. Ji Guangzong at the ready. Here's a quick-firing, never-tiring, smooth operator from Pompeii named Pino Dangio. Keeping the world safe for disco in 1981, this is OK OK on Hanoi Community Radio. Catenazzo che donna sei Io delle donne non mi fido Il corteggiamento è un rito Troppo spesso si finisce Che una donna ti tradisce E non mi importa se son bionde Non mi importa se son more A me basta che siano tonde E disposte a far l'amore Io da bambino veramente fui cacciato dalla scuola Perché la professoressa mi faceva molto gola Quando facevo il militare Poi la moglie del tenente mi faceva le moine Di una presa tra la gente Perciò bambina Se sono qui per te stasera è una fortuna le rifiuto, ne ho già fatto in digestione quando sono di tre quarti le regalo a qualche amico se decido per più tardi le conservo dentro il frigo ho deciso adesso è fatta con quegli occhi lì da gatta nel mio letto ci scommetto figli come un vaporetto perciò bambina se sono qui per te stasera è una fortuna Che donna sei, ballo come un diavoletto, ballo anch'io, tutto perfetto, mentre il cuore nel mio petto mi sfarfalla e mi va stretto, non capisco che succede, sono confuso ma sincero, io ti guardo all'improvviso, mi innamoro per davvero, per Gesù che ero ti prego, ascolta quello che ti ho detto nel mio cuore, tutto un tratto c'è un amore maledetto, sul mio letto di gerani, di profumo non ce n'è, io per questo cerco un fiore come fiore ho scelto te, perciò bambino, se tu sei qui per me stasera, beh sì, è una fortuna.
Jam with Fluid Druid on Hanoi Community Radio. That groovy number is Wanna Come Down by an English-Nigerian electronic Afro-funk band called Ibibio Sound Machine. They say their sound is inspired in equal measure by the golden era of West African funk and disco, along with modern post-punk and electro. And the name of the band finds influence from its lead singer Eno Williams, whose mother tongue is Ibibio. She was born in London, but grew up in Nigeria. There her mum would tell her folk and children's stories from her own heritage, and Williams took this inspiration and crafted lyrics from the stories, putting them together with modern themes. Just the kind of thing we look for here on Earth Jam. Time now for a change of pace. And we find ourselves in northeastern Thailand, a region called Isan. Our journey takes us into the lesser known reaches of 1970s Thai music, where the traditional style of Luk Thung, which literally means Song of the Countryside, 
meets the pulsing, electrified country rhythms and heartfelt folky vocals of a groovy psychedelic genre known as Mulam. By pure chance, I came across this example of it. A song called Fang Jai Vyangjan. But by no means am I the only crate digger to have unearthed it in recent years. It appears that Dr. Dre got there first. And he sampled it for a song that he produced called Another Day, which was on the soundtrack for Straight Outta Compton. It's pretty dope, but respectfully, I think he left out the best bits, which are the killer vocals of Teporn Pechabon. So forget about Dre. In the spirit of an Earth Jam, in a while I'm going to introduce his interpretation, but then mix it back in to the original track. Just because I can. Oh, we young can crank. ยากมาดนในกมลเพ้อปันคิดถึงความหลังครั้งที่อยู่เวียงจันเคยได้ชื่นที่วันกับแม่ควันชีวีโอ้เวียงจันรักฉันต้องเลื่อนลอยห่ว
อนเงาอ่อนมากอดนอนที่บังไทยแต่กลัวยาลิฟ์ around the world and online at Hanoi Community Radio com. This is Earth Jam. It's Earth Jam with Fluid Druid, and that beautiful tune of the tropics comes from o s a l a t e Rojo. The bird song might be South American, but the ambiance it captures matches, I think, the current mood here in Hanoi, where we spend our days watching from inside as the rainy season washes overhead. Even as I speak to you right now, there's a deluge of thick, heavy, and warm droplets pelting my window. It is, as we would say back home, lashing. But that's okay. The sun will come out tomorrow. Now, odds are, if you know what a cello is, you've probably heard of a musician named Yo-Yo Ma. But in case you haven't. He's an American cellist, born in Paris to Chinese parents, and educated in New York City. He was a true child prodigy, performing from the age of four and a half. He graduated from the Juilliard School and Harvard University, and has performed as a soloist with orchestras around the world, as well as being involved in the most bizarre and wonderful range of projects. As you can hear, he really puts the back into b a c c h a n a l Look it up. Well, just last week, Yo-Yo Ma dropped a new album called Notes for the Future, and boy, have I been digging it! 
Essentially, he's gone and done himself an Earth Jam. Teaming up with some phenomenal musicians from five continents across nine tracks. On a global journey to explore how culture can help us imagine and build a better world. So, hey, Yo-Yo Ma. If you're listening to this, we should totally do a thing sometime. The album has vocals in Arabic, Zapotec, Catalan, Paiwan, Spanish, Wolastuque, Ue, Maori, and English. With an aim to celebrate the wisdom of the generations that were, and the possibility of those to come. Now the track I've chosen from it is called Honor Song. And Yo-Yo Ma has teamed up with a guy called Jeremy Dutcher, who is a classically trained operatic tenor from the Wulastuig tribe, which is a First Nations indigenous group from a land that later came to be known as Canada. So this guy Dutcher says that many of his people's songs were lost because their musical tradition was suppressed by the Canadian government. And now, there's only a hundred Wulastuig speakers left. He believes it's crucial to keep using their language, because if you lose a language, you lose an entire distinct way of experiencing the world. As my grandfather says back in Ireland, Bahachanga i alawarch. The life of a language is to speak it.
now for something completely different. that keeping the cello vibe alive and reflecting fundamental elements of sound and soul that was a quartet from kiev called dakabraka which means give take in the old ukrainian language i only just discovered them and have been floored by their super catchy and authentic sound it's a lovely reminder that there's always a whole world of unexpected new music out there you just gotta look for it. Also, according to the band, their genre is described as ethnic chaos. I mean, where do I sign up? And so soon, we approach the end of another installment of Earth Jam. Thank you, as always, for joining me on this journey. It's the highlight of my week. Tasulugunger Banshiv Tanya Fasanklor. I have been and remain fluid druid. And for our last song tonight, a reminder that Steve Dahl failed in his mission. This is a new track from a French duo called Soliance, titled Disco Sega. We'll see you again soon. Fep twat hon luan.
But for what it's worth, you've made a believer out of me. Good luck, killer.